Good evening once again. This is Pastor Perkins. Thank you for taking the time to join us in worship this evening. I just pray that God is going to give you a blessing. You're going to hear a word from God that is literally going to change your life forever. Tonight I want to speak to you from this subject matter. Seek ye first the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 6 verse number 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 9 to verse number 13. These are all coming from the King James Version. Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, verse number 9 to 13. After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and amen. Through this teaching I pray that the Father of glory and the God of our Lord Jesus Christ will impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know him through our your deepening intimacy with God. That is my prayer. My main text for this presentation, as I said, is coming from Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 is a continuation of the Sermon on the Mount, which started in chapter 5 and concludes in chapter 7. The Sermon on the Mount opens with this statement, and seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and, he, he was, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened up his mouth and taught them, saying, the Bible says, he went up. Who went up? Jesus, the King of glory. Psalm 24, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John 1. Verse number 14, the Sermon on the Mount, recording the Gospel of Matthew, includes some of the most well-known teachings of Jesus, such as the Beatitudes. Many writers have named the Sermon on the Mount as the speech of the King. Others have said that the Sermon on the Mount is a lightning bolt, a direct revelation from God coming from the mouth of the incarnate Word Himself. Nestled in the pericope from Matthew 5 to Matthew 7 is our main text in this presentation, Matthew 6.33. Simply saying, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Many have viewed this as only a command to seek the kingdom and his righteousness. But I contend it is more than just a command. It is a profound revelation that has the capacity to change the, your perspective of life and give you motivation, but it also alters the trajectory of your life and destiny. The opening, verse, opening lines in there say, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. Why does it specify you must seek the, the kingdom of God first? Because there are three kingdoms. I know many teachings say there are two, but there are three. There is the kingdom of God, which is the kingdom of light. You have the kingdom of man, and then you have the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of Satan. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan are kingdoms that are looking to bring expression. They are trying to find significance in the kingdoms of man. The kingdom of man is a kingdom of expression. We know that in John 10, 10, the Bible says the enemy comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came that you might have life and have life more abundantly, specifying the objectives, where there is stealing, where there is destruction, where there is death, is an expression of the kingdom of darkness in the kingdoms of man. Where there is joy, peace, righteousness, it is an expression of the kingdom of God in the kingdoms of man. But I want to focus my, our attention on the phrase, seek ye first, seek ye first. First, we look at the word seek. Seek ye, we must seek the kingdom of God. 
The word seek here is the Greek word zeteo, zeteo, z-e-t-e-o, zeteo, which is defined as to seek in order to find, which means one has to be intentional in their searching. Intentional not only to search, but intentional in finding it. Not just to be intentional about finding it, but to aim at it, to strive after it. So seek, zeteo, strive for, be intentional in finding it, aim for it. Not just to aim or strive after, but to crave, crave the kingdom of God, demand something from someone. The word zeteo also is def defined as to inquire into, so go after, crave, seek, be intentional, go after, inquire about the kingdom of God. The word zeteo is not just talking about the action, but it also speaks about the process that you go, you go through in looking after or pursuing the kingdom of God. It's speaking about the how, the process. When you are in the process of Zeteo, seeking the kingdom of God, you seek the kingdom of God in order to find out by your thinking, by your meditation, by your reasoning, and by your actions. So be intentional in your thinking. Be intentional in your meditation. Be intentional in your reasoning. Crave for the kingdom of God in your thinking. Crave for the kingdom of God in your meditation. Crave for the kingdom of God in your reasoning. We are instructed to set the kingdom of God as our main focus. It says, seek zeteo, ye, you, first, protos. The word first here, that is when it first in the English is the Greek word protos. The word protos. That means this word is defined as first in time or place in any succession of things or persons. It means it's first in rank, first in influence, first in honor. It is the chief thing. It is the principal thing. It is the first thing. It is the first of many, but it is the first thing. So when it says, seek ye first, zeteo the protos. Go after the protos. Let this be your priority. Make this your priority. The craving, the craving for the kingdom. Let this be your priority. Going after of the kingdom of God, let this be your priority. In my presentation, briefly, I'm going to speak about the kingdom of God the kingdom of God, zeteo, the kingdom of God. The Greek word rendered kingdom in Matthew 6.33 is the word basilia, basilia, which is defined as the royal power, kingship, dominion, rule. It should not be confused with an actual kingdom, but rather the right or authority to rule over a kingdom of the royal power of Jesus as the triumphant Messiah of the royal power and dignity conferred on Christians in the Messiah's kingdom. The word kingdom, Basilia, it also speaks about the domain, a kingdom, a territory, subject to the rule of the king. The Bible tells us in Romans 14, 17, that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy and the Holy Ghost, the kingdom of God, is not meat and drink. It's not the things that you put in your stomach, the things you eat, but it is joy, righteousness, and peace and the Holy Ghost. I like the way that the Message Bible puts it to us. It says, God's kingdom is in a matter of what you put in your stomach for goodness sake. It's what God does with your life as he sets it right puts it together and completes it with joy. The kingdom of God is what God does with your life as he sets it right, puts it together and completes it with joy. That's Romans 14 verse number 17 from the Message Bible. We have to understand some things about the kingdom or the basilia what, that we are being encouraged, being commanded, being instructed to seek after. The basic elements of a kingdom 
The first elements can be derived from the word itself, king and domain. The king is the ruler, the one that rules over the domain. He has dominion, authority, and power. We're told, seek ye first the kingdom, the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of men, not the kingdom of darkness, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the domain of the king. The king in this domain cannot be separated. Jesus said the kingdom that you are going after, that you are zetaoing, is not a kingdom of this world. John 18 verse number 36. Jesus answered and said, my kingdom is not of this world. That's John 18 verse number 36. My kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom, well, I'm going to say it again. My kingdom is not of this world. So you are not seeking a kingdom that you can find in this world because it is not a kingdom of this world. It is not a kingdom of this world. We are told to go after it with everything that we have. That kingdom also has a king. It has a throne, a place to rule from. Psalm 103 verse number 19. The Lord has established his throne in the heaven and his kingdom rules over all. It has a throne. That kingdom has authority. Jesus said in Matthew 28 verse number 18, all power, all authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. And verse number 20 of the same, same chapter, he says, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. In the kingdom, there is a territory, a place where the king exercises his domain, his dominion, a territory. Isaiah 66 verse number one says, Thus says the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. That means the earth is God's domain. He rules and reigns over it. Because the king has a territory, he has a domain, there is a boundary. A boundary implies, that having a territory implies the existence of a boundary. So each kingdom has boundaries. These boundaries define what is the king's domain. Each kingdom has a nature. I already told you the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It is not of this world. The kingdom, every kingdom has laws. These are laws that govern the kingdom. The laws can be as diverse as what is and what is not permissible in the kingdom. We have Exodus 15 verse number 26 he says, and will give ear to his commandments and keep his, all his statutes. Psalm 1, verse number 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Psalm 19, verse number 17, the law of the Lord is perfect. Psalm 119, verse number 1, blessed are they are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of God. Romans 8, 2, for the law of the spirit of life is Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Each kingdom has citizens. These are subjects, subject for a kingdom. The ones that are being ruled over by a king. So it's not just a rule in terms of geographical area, but it is also the subjects. One has to be a citizen of the kingdom. How do you become a citizen of the kingdom of God? John 3.3 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Nicodemus that is, Very, verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Do you want to be a part of the kingdom of God? Are you seeking up of the kingdom of God? You must be born again. John 17 verse 20, 21. And when he was, he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, you cannot observe this kingdom with your natural eye. It is a kingdom that comes by revelation. A kingdom that comes by revelation. The citizens of a kingdom serve the kingdom. They serve their king. Each kingdom has a requirement, has, has a law or a requirement that defines what is upright. The kingdom of God has righteousness as a requirement, Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and his righteousness. Matthew 5, 20 says, for I say unto you, that except your righteousness 
shall exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not just any righteousness, but a certain type of righteousness. Each kingdom has a protocol that governs your behavior, your conduct, your actions. In the kingdom of God, you must be led by the Spirit. Each kingdom has resources available to it. Each kingdom is available to it. The resources that are available to the citizens. Matthew 13, verse number 11, He answered and said unto them, Because it is given for you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. So there are mysteries in the kingdom of God that are not available to anybody else because they are resources to the citizens of the kingdom of God. Each kingdom has a culture. Each kingdom has a culture. In this culture, the kingdom of God, there is a code of conduct. We must worship. We must pray. We must praise. We must walk by faith. Each kingdom has a message. John 10, 10 says, I came, the enemy came but to steal, kill, and destroy. But the message of the kingdom of God is what we call the gospel of the kingdom of God. The message of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom. In Matthew 6, verse number 9 to 13, when the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray, he said, you pray, our Father in heaven, says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That means there is a kingdom. There is a king. The king desires to have his, to have his expression over the place that he rules. We told you early on, according to the prophet Isaiah, that the heavens are his throne and the earth is his footstool. He desires for his kingdom to have expression in the earth. And we have been given the invitation that if you want to see the kingdom of God in the earth, you must zeteo, you must make it your priority. You must crave for it. You must hunger for it in your thinking, in your meditation, in your actions. You must be intentional. You must be deliberate in pursuing the kingdom of God. Let this be your priority. Go after the kingdom of God. I'm going to say it again. Let this be your priority. Go after the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 33, from the Passion Translation says, So above all, constantly chase after the realm of God's kingdom and the righteousness that proceeds from him. Then all these less important things will be given to you abundantly, constantly. It's not a one-off thing. It's not a one-day thing. Every day of your life, the kingdom of God must be your priority. It must be the thing that is priority in your thinking. It must be the thing that is priority in your meditation. It must be the thing that is priority in all your engagement and in all your activities. What does it mean to be a subject of the kingdom of God? When we pursue and seek the kingdom of God, we are saying we are willingly going after, seeking after God, after his kingdom, so that we can be under his rule. We can be under his authority, that we can become subjects of this king. We must become subject, which means if you want the kingdom of God in your life, you are saying, I want Christ to rule and reign over me, not just in some areas of my life, but I want him to rule and reign in every dimension, in every aspect of my life. I want to be a subject of the kingdom of God. I am going to make this priority. Imagine, I am going to make a priority. I know that I want to be free. I want to be independent. I want to be liberated. Why would I come and bring myself under the subjection, under the authority of another? Why must I actively 
pursue? Why must I crave for? Why must I hunger? Why must I make this the priority to be under the rule of another? Brothers and sisters, it is imperative for you to know that there is no freedom that can be compared to the freedom that is found under the rulership of Christ. The Bible says, He whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Do you want to live in a place where you are free? Do you want to live in a place where you experience the fullness of joy? Where you experience the abundance of peace that surpasses all human understanding? If that is your desire, I urge you, I urge you to seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Make this your priority, hunger and thirst for the kingdom of God and his righteousness in all your endeavors, in your thinking, in your meditation, in your reasoning, in your engagement. Let the kingdom of God be your protos. Let the rulership of Christ be your protos. Let this be your priority. Express a willingness to be a subject to the kingdom of God. Express your willingness to be subject to the King of glory. How then do I pursue? How do I seek the kingdom of God? Simple. Hebrews 11 verse number 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. You should know that God is real. God spoke everything into existence. He is God. How would you approach God if you don't believe that there is a God? How would you pursue? How would you zeteo His kingdom if you don't believe that He is present? You must be born again. You must be born again. You must be a person of prayer. You must read your word. You must be in fellowship with God and in fellowship with with the Spirit. You must attend church. Yes, I say it. You must attend church. Why? Because when you attend church, they are go you are going to hear the news of the gospel. You are going to hear the good news of the kingdom. You are going to hear about the kingdom of God. You are going to see a revelation of the kingdom of God. Brothers and sisters, if you say, I am going to seek after, I am going to zeteo the kingdom of God. I am going to make the kingdom of God the product in my life. Then you must be a church attender. Not just be a church attender. You must be actively engaged in church. You must actively participate in church. But remember, everybody, everybody who is under subjection to the kingdom serves the king. Serves the king. You must become a disciple. You must develop spiritual disciplines. Yes, you must fast. You must praise. And above all, you should walk in obedience. Remember, willingly bringing yourself under subjection to the rulership, to the authority, to the throne of God, saying, I want to be a subject. I want to be a citizen of the kingdom of God. Therefore, I am saying, not my will, but your will be done. I am gladly bringing myself into subjection to your authority and your rulership. Brothers and sisters, I ask you today, where you are seated, where you are listening to me from, is the kingdom of God your protos? If it is, do your actions, do your actions testify that the kingdom of God is your priority. What you think what you meditate on, how you reason, does it testify that indeed the kingdom of God is your priority? Does it testify that the kingdom of God is your protos? I just came tonight to say to you, there is nothing better in life than to be a subject of the kingdom of God. There is nothing better in life than to be a citizen of the kingdom of God. There is nothing greater than man can ever attain than that which is available in the kingdom of God. I give you an invitation tonight. Make up your mind. Make a decision. From this day forward, I will zeteo the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God and His righteousness are going to be my priority. 
because you have made that decision to pursue the kingdom of God and to make it your priority. I promise you, I promise you that your life will never be the same. The best days of your life are ahead. Why? Because there's nothing greater than being a citizen. There's nothing greater than being a subject of the kingdom of God. Thank you so much for joining us. I know that tonight some kingdom citizens have just been received and their minds have been challenged to make the kingdom of God their portals. God bless you. We love you. And we look forward to seeing you very soon. Good night to you all.